thank you everyone for sticking around. That was a fantastic talk by Ritesh. Uh, I'm Abhay Kumar, now the new CEO of Youth Kiawas. <laughs> After that talk, I just want to be a CEO of uh, It's a request, let's not uh, let Ritesh out of the building and the room because Ritesh, like, this session is about independent filmmaking and there's a big problem there. So if you're a problem solver, that's where we give you a great independent film distribution. Uh, so this session, like I said, is about filmmaking and uh, we have uh, the fantastic Kanu Behel here in person and this session would be called How to Make Life Difficult for Kanu. Uh, <laughs> as an independent filmmaker, there's not much you can add to that. It's, yeah, there's not, you're kind of done for. Um, so uh, the format of this session would be um, we will invite Kanu on stage. I will start with asking some questions and Kanu, please take a seat. You know, uh, trying to be an upcoming filmmaker, I think I was what, 20, 324 back then, uh, we're trying to figure out how to break into the industry and I would always read the opening credits of the film, that like who's the chief or the dialogue uh, or the director's assistant and I saw Kanu Bell's name there and Oilaki was a film I loved and forgive me Kanu, I actually thought Kanu was a girl because I have a cousin called Kanu who's a girl, so yeah, so so I thought who's this girl who's working with Devakar and like you know and then in Love Sex Dhoka he was the co-writer and so I, I had him on my, um, you know, young filmmakers are very competitive, not unlike young entrepreneurs. They just want to know who's like doing what and how, how they're breaking into the industry. And then Kanu, of course, um, after working with Devakar, and I, I found out he's done documentaries which have been, uh, which have uh, been commissioned by um, the Japanese television, NHK. Um, and he's a pass out of SRFTI. And, uh, before we knew what was happening, he just erupted onto the scene with the tree which played at Khan and then went on for a limited release. And more intriguing than anything else, Kanu was instrumental in breaking this wall where, you know, in the first time it came out that, you know, Dibakar Banerjee has a three film production deal with uh, Yashraj and Titli, seeing the trailer being backed by Yashraj, it was, people went bonkers that this is the beginning of a new age. We're not sure if that's happened or not. Um, Kanu is here to tell us more about that. but. It, it was a phenomenal sort of a fourth wall breaking moment and um, um, hopefully he can shed some light on that. But we, we were also on a panel together in Dharamsala uh, and what, what we've discovered is when whenever there are such Q and A's, the conversation generally veers towards distribution and finance and you know the very the non-creative aspects of filmmaking so today and, and there are no easy answers for that. Like as, as an independent filmmaker, I can also tell you that these discussions are not binary discussions to me. Like, these are very complicated sort of uh, procedures where mostly the directors are not even involved in these sort of decisions. So we would really love for the conversation to be more towards the creatives and, and how, of course, like you guys know what to ask, but still, like, you know, that, that, that would be our, uh, so that we can inspire you to uh, stay independent, make the films you want to make, and, and how to make that possible. So Kanu, um, you have a mic? I have no oh, choice. That's so, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, first of all, what does Kanu mean? Like, <laughs> so, so that nobody mistake, makes that mistake again. Yeah, before we even get there, there, there was, you know, this, this whole thing about Kanu being a girl. Yeah. There's, there, there was, for quite a while, I think there was a entry on Dibakar's wiki page which said that, uh, you know, he's gotten divorced with his wife and he's moved to Delhi and is now living with his creative partner called Kanu. <laughs> he has written LSD with, so it goes, uh, you know, yeah. way back. Kanu is, Kanu comes from Krishna. Uh, Radha is Kanu Pira, so Krishna is Kanu. Oh. Are you anything like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, Tell us uh, about this transition uh, you made from um, assisting, um, assisting one of the finest directors to finding your own voice. Um, is, is there something about the journey you'd like to share with young and upcoming filmmakers? Um, it's 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 never as as you know it's never a, you know never one path that is uh, sort of you know it's never a charted path. I think it differs for everybody. I think for me the journey started very early on. Uh, I think when I was about 17 or 18, I decided when I when I was sure that you know I want to be a filmmaker, I want to direct. I think I was fortunate that I was in a sort of quasi film kind of household. My mum was a writer, actor. My father was an actor who had 
gotten forced into direction because no one was giving him him the kind of parts that he wanted. So you know, he he said, "Let me direct. Let me see if I can put myself in something good, and then I'll get something." And uh, he eventually ended up getting recognized more as a director, and still didn't get the parts that he wanted. So uh, I was in this quasi film kind of household. I was working with them. I was assisting them. And I had started acting when I was about 12, 13, then aiding with them. So I think with me, one of the things that happened was that I cleared the basics really early. By 16, 17, I had done you know a lot of the stuff that needed to be done. Um, and uh, I knew about FTI. I knew about SRFTI. And I said, okay, so I'm really interested in learning about the history of cinema because uh, I think instinctively early on, I I knew that. If I wanted to make films, I didn't want to do something that had been already done before. Uh, so for that, I really was curious and came to find out what had been done. And you know, there is so much cinema all over the world. Uh, so I think uh, it felt it felt sort of uh, uh, it felt like the right decision to spend those three four years in a film school, which is a huge chunk of time. So. Uh, from 17 to basically 23 was me mostly just biding time. He, because uh, film schools are postgraduate uh, courses, so you have to finish your graduation. Um, and then I uh, eventually, you know, it took me two years to crack film school. Uh, applied, didn't get through, went the next year. Uh, applied for editing the first year at SRFTI and uh, got to the interview. They said, uh, what, what do you, you know, what will you do eventually when you pass out? And I was like, I want to direct. So like, why haven't you applied for direction? And that was that. So they didn't take me. They said apply for direction next year. So then came back, uh, eventually got through, graduated in 2007. And uh, yeah, I mean, going to Bombay was, uh, you want me to use that? Yeah, so this is erratic. Yeah. So uh, going to Bombay was natural because I had grown up on quite a staple diet of, uh, of Bollywood. Uh, matlab, uh, uh, you know, early years I had seen everything that was Bollywood and there, I wasn't really exposed to international cinema. I, it was only b around the time that, uh, you know, 21, 22 that I really, you know, developed an appetite for other kinds of cinema. And that just grew uh, through film school. And even though uh, I had grown beyond what I thought I initially wanted to do or make as a filmmaker, uh, I, st I still didn't know how to do it. And I think because of half because of that, I said, let's go to Bombay. By then, I was al al already doing documentaries. I had a you know, couple of films commissioned from NHK, one from ZDFRT, and I had discovered documentary in film school. Uh, 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 I, I think it's similar, just like you, because I was really fiction oriented and uh, you know while I, I was at SRFT and Kolkata the the doc movement was catching on. So I was doing these docs which were really really interesting and I, I think I was pushing myself uh, always in a direction where I was saying you know what how do I how do I find find myself how do I find that breakthrough story or or, or that voice that will help me uh, uh, get to do what I want and uh, uh, I think around the time I was finishing my last doc, uh, uh, the meeting with Dibakar happened. Uh, he was looking for an ed editor, and one of my mentors at uh, film school uh, uh, had met him, and he wanted to share his work. And he eventually went on to edit Oilaki. So I was supposed to deliver the DVD uh, to to Dibakar uh, so that he could see his work. So I slipped in my own work. I was doing the doc, and I was like, you know, he's a fellow filmmaker. I'll get feedback. Ye wo, ye wo. But he ended up seeing it around that time. He was doing Oilaki, and uh, that was set in Delhi. And I had shot this film. My film was set in Delhi. I shot it myself. I think he liked what he saw, and he was like, "I'm doing this film in Delhi." And I had seen Kosla, so I was like, "Okay, this sounds interesting." And so that's how Oilaki happened. From there, the relationship just rapidly grew. It went on to you know, by the time we finished Oilaki, I had done so much work on it that he said, "I'm writing this film." And it was a really weird film. And I felt like it was something that had not been done before. And I was really curious. Plus, he was saying, write it with me. So I was like, OK. So then it moved on to LSD. And from there, it just naturally sort of you know, grew, grew into the three. Were you involved in Shanghai as well? I was very peripherally involved. But, but, but I was involved when it was being written and when it was being edited. 
but by then i i had already sort of moved out and i had started writing on my own there was another feature that was that i was writing before tikli which i tried to you know mount for a couple of years didn't happen uh, so i was i think around that time i was busy writing that one right uh, so a lot of young people here uh, it's funny to call them young people like we are young as well you know um, uh, for yourself i feel old so um especially like for example you came from a quasi film uh, background so it was um mentally sort of you were prepared at some levels you knew what it takes how the life is uh say i was from chandigarh and you know growing up one never feels even like for kids here like it's very it's like this sort of zeitgeist you know going to bombay assisting how do you make it there's no set path um and of course from your time uh, and from even when i was starting out technology has changed and uh, a lot of us are empowered to sort of make our films ourselves so there's this whole shift towards not assisting um because not everyone can be a good assistant i feel uh, but there was till, till, till some years back there was this thing un unless you assist you cannot really sort of you know uh, grow up uh, in films so um that that's one practical question i have for you like and I'm, i'm sure for a lot of uh, young filmmakers who want to make their own films do you think it is important to assist um in terms of just to learn the ropes of because you're going to be dealing with those people at some point of time you can make a film in delhi but to show the film of course you have to go to bombay you have to deal with the film world per se so do you have any advice about that in terms of i think more than more than assisting or more than uh, uh uh working with someone i think it's the time that you spend with yourself i think there are several parts to spend that time with yourself one is assisting it 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 i mean the same time you can choose to spend in a film school or the same time you can choose to not assist or not go to a film school but you will still need to spend that time with yourself because making a film at the end of the day is such a uh, such a personal and gut wrenching experience as I'm, i'm sure you know you've been working with placebo now for 5 years so uh, uh you know it's really about that time uh let's say from 15 or 16 or 17 to uh 24 or 25 i mean chaitanya made his film pretty early so you know i ended up i i i started writing quickly at about 31 so it varies but i think what is needed is that time that you spend with yourself and where you get to uh, uh sort of peel the layers of yourself so i think that's what uh, any young person i think needs to go for where they are able to in a sense uh, uh find a equivalent of sitting in a room sitting in a dark room and spending time with themselves i'm not saying that you actually need to do do that but find whatever your equi equivalent of that 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 thing that process is uh sometimes it can come from interacting with other people and uh, uh uh you know it can it i mean that's what transforms you and that process of transformation growing up learning from your experiences knowing who you are as a storyteller uh what kinds of stories uh what kind of stories you want to tell uh where do you want to go uh, with those stories are those stories spread out uh are they are they addressing uh 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 you know are they vertical or are they horizontal uh do you want to say stories about uh something uh, you know about trying to reinterpret a story and and saying it in a way which has not been said before uh or do you want do you, do you see yourself finding new stories i mean i met so many people who say there are no new stories i don't agree with that for me I, it's only important to make a film if it's either of the two a you know one it's 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 a film that has been done before but it has not been done before that way or it's a completely new thought it's it's something that has not been said at all but uh, what i meant to ask was in more of a guru shishya parampara like uh, the importance of mentorship when it comes to you know sort of transitioning into feature film making like when you look at say for example not everyone is lucky enough to go to or lucky or you know they they choose not to go to film school where a lot of these connections are made um so some of the filmmakers so for example you could say divakar was a mentor in some way right well yes yeah. for sure and and i i recently saw work by gurvinder singh and you know and how he was so close with mani gol and um and it's it's not just learning the technique of filmmaking it's about you know um uh, uh, being with a person in 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 a com more complete way and sort of so that is i think personally for me also i feel trying to sort of learn everything by myself and 
uh, of the internet. You know, it kind of feels like you're 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 watching Dronacharya from far away. You know, just watch downloading these torrents and learning everything by the internet. So I think that is something a lot of young filmmakers miss. You know, the absence of a mentorship. For example, now you made a feature film. Uh, you you you're struggling how to put it out. You're already onto your next project, funding this and that. And also, like if a young person approaches you, because you know now you will probably become a mentor for someone. So don't don't you think filmmakers become kind of uh, inaccessible, and that spirit of mentorship does not uh, foster unless you assist someone. So that is. It's an interesting question, you know, but. Uh, very honestly i don't know how dibakar was a mentor in the strict sense of the word uh dibakar and me have a very uh, uh, have had a very uh, just a very you know almost you can call it a distant work related relationship it's not like we were sitting having conversations over daru or you know smoking joints and saying ha ah, what do you think about life or what do you think about films and we should do this kind of cinema or we should do that kind of cinema i think it's a very individual process i think it's about you interacting with people and picking up what you want to pick up so i think it's it's anyway a very lonely and personal process i don't think it is necessitated by uh, 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 you know having a mentor i but i think as soon as you Uh, uh launch on that journey to try to find yourself you'll find people which attract you you know in a certain sort of way because you are on that certain journey and there will be people on a similar journey you will attract them and they'll they'll probably a part of be a part of your life and you'll you'll learn what you have to learn from them and and move on from there and i think that's the best way to do it otherwise we end up uh, uh you know copying someone or we end up being uh, just another image uh, so i think I think it's at the end of the day filmmaking is just very very individual very very lonely uh and that's the best way to do it. I think the more you look inward the more you strengthen your core as as a filmmaker because uh you're in a war and you know that's the first battle to win uh uh knowing yourself. Uh you use the words um it's lonely it's 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 tough it's it's isolating in a way having given a talk on mental health uh, before I have to ask you this. So, how do you uh, not get cynical? Like in a way, um, that that's something like dealing with sensor, what you can see, what you can't see, distribution, the very non-creative finances. It's very easy to get jaded, cynical, uh, get that anger. Uh, I spoke about anger in the morning. Kanu can tell a lot about that from his experiences. Um, how do you how do you protect? Because it's important to protect your inner core. Keep that childish, you know, sort of uh, fun in filmmaking going on. So how how do you you have a? I'm still trying to figure a way. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> like um, um, no, I think uh, the only thing that I can say is any artist, any filmmaker, if they're truly trying to you know explore, if they're feeling the need uh, to say something, whatever they might want to say, I think they're driven by a deep need or a desire for change. and people who really honestly are interested in that change uh they uh at, at the bottom somewhere are humanists and i think they are able to preserve that because it's coming from a desire to change so uh you're you're you've dived into that because you feel like there needs to be a change so then after point you know you can't really stop and say oh my god it's it's too tough or it's tiring or it's not giving me the results uh, uh that 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 i want uh because you just turn around to yourself and you say but you know if it was the way it should have been i shouldn't have been here in the first place i i wouldn't have felt the need to to go out there and say what i want to say so this this is the way it is it's probably going to happen uh uh, uh you know at a slower pace that you want to uh because you yourself in your head are running faster i think that's the only way to deal with it i think that's a very important point um now we open up the house for questions